All right, everybody, we're going to continue from the last segment where we were talking about Manual S, and this is the next step. We've already selected our equipment, and we're going to see if the duct system that exists in this house will support it. So we have chosen a 60,000 BTU, two-stage, 95% AFUE furnace. It's got a three-ton drive in it. It's going to get paired with a two-ton air conditioner that has airflow anywhere between 1,000 and 1,200 CFM. The 1,200 CFM is going to meet our sensible, meet our latent, meet our total. At 1,000 CFM, it's covering 90% of our sensible, not 100% of it, but it's it's okay. Uh, what I would like to do in a perfect world is set it up so that it runs at 1000 CFM if my humidity is higher in the structure and 1200 if my humidity is lower. And that's not a, a reach when it comes to some of the equipment that's available and the furnaces and the technology is a good way to put it. So. Do the ducks have enough area is the question, and we're not talking about ducks like that. And I'm going to tell a little story. I'm uh, doing uh, some stuff for a local utility around here. And I always tell myself when I'm playing golf, don't look at your phone. I did. They asked me a question. I did voice to text. And when upper management sees your, your description for a class that they're putting on a web ad, and it says ducks, right, instead of ducts. I haven't figured out how to get the voice to text to recognize my voice with that one. So this is going in the class, and I'm hoping one of the cheeses see it and make fun of me, right? So that's what life's all about. This is an edited slide that I'm adding because I think I said two tons on the previous slide and I don't want to go back and redo the entire slide so I just want to point out that it's two and a half tons period I also got a new computer I don't know if you can tell the difference but for whatever reason I happen to have the same shirt on it when I did the other stuff and we're just going to add this to the deck I'm going to upload it and we're going to put it out there so thanks for watching so we're going to look at the ducks uh, again, this is a house with an existing duct system, so I'm going to take a peek at the duct system. Uh, if you're familiar with Manual D, you'll know that you can take a peek and see if we have a, a critical, critical path that exceeds 500 feet. Uh, if it, it, if yes, right, if, if it's under 500 feet, then proceed. If it's not, then we're going to do something to correct it. If you don't know what uh, TEL stands for, you don't know what critical path is with reference to 500 feet, well, then that book over there to the right, or my right, uh, is what you need to investigate. So we're not covering Manual D today, per se, but we're going to reference it. Manual D, it's, uh, it's required to have a fundamental understanding of it to follow along with what I'm doing today. And if what I show you intrigues you to look into it, well then that was good good for me and then good for you. And we don't need rules of dumb and uh, Luke Peterson taught me that one a couple months ago. So I, I like that rules of dumb. I'm not an advocate of rules of thumb. So we looked at the effective length, or excuse me, the total effective length of the duct system. Uh, we want to make sure that it has enough internal area to support our airflow. When I say support our airflow, we can move the volume that's required at a velocity that is acceptable, and an acceptable velocity is one where we're, we're not going to have noise. Right? The, the idea of turning up the TV when the system comes on uh, is a reality, and it's kind of odd that there are people that actually expect that to happen and we don't want it to so there's a couple of ways we can go about this uh, i have three up here and we're really only going to look at number one today but size versus velocity uh, static pressure readings with experience you can take some static pressure readings on a system as long as the the coils are clean coils plural as in evaporator and secondary if it's a high efficiency furnace the blower wheel's not dirty things of that nature if not then that isn't really a good way to do it 
then I have advanced testing up there. I'm talking about using a true flow plate, a, a duck blaster, maybe doing a formal traverse or something of that nature. But I don't, well, maybe there's uh, some uh, room in there for a salesperson, but they should be able to do, or somebody should be doing this in a change out. And I'm going to say it always isn't getting done because we have systems that don't work. This slide's pretty straightforward. It's just showing the formulas for CFM is equal to area times velocity, and you can manipulate that to either solve for CFM velocity or area. Uh, I'm starting to learn how to use the, the whole process re recording these things. And when I first started doing these, I thought I had to go back to the very beginning and start over. I'm learning that I can do individual slides. I'm also looking at some of these things and I'm horrified. I don't think I'm an old guy, but I have these giant caterpillar eyebrows and I keep seeing these shots where it's like my eyebrows covering all my, my entire eye and it's, it's just cracking me up. This is a excellent slide to talk about velocity. It's directly out of manual D. The numbers that we see are showing us supplies, uh, supply side and return side in our velocities. It gives us a max number and then it gives us a conservative number. Historically, I have always sized somewhere between six and 800 feet per minute on the supply, somewhere between six and 700 feet per minute on the return. The numbers I was used to are higher than that, and we'll see that in just a second. But this has changed in the, and I'm not sure about this, but it's been within the last half a dozen years or so. These numbers have been relaxed a little bit. There's some guidance in here where it talks about things with regards to if you're using fiberglass products, you can have a little bit more velocity because the the idea behind it is the fiberglass will deaden the sound. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. Velocity is all about uh, noise. And we can keep putting more powerful fans in to overcome the, the poorly sized ductwork, but the penalty is, is noise. The one part in here, it's uh, note seven, and I think my mug is blocking where it actually says it. But what they're referencing is if you have velocity, excuse me, uh, runouts with uh, CF 30 CFM or less, easy for me to say. And what they're addressing is high velocity systems. I that, And that's a guess on my part, but I, I believe I'm correct with it. So uh, to, to finish up on this one, uh, we have our supply trunks. Yeah, it's 700 to a happy number. Returns, 600 feet per minute is a happy number. Uh, size your registers for their throw. And again, that's manual T stuff, but that's how you do it. And then it gives us a little guidance over here about return grills. Uh, I, I enjoy people telling me that I'm supposed to use commercial grills because that looks better. Um, true, but commercial grills in a residence are really good for people that don't know how to do the math to figure out what your velocity is supposed to be across a grill. So onward and upwards. This is an old ductulator from uh, our place, and it has residences at a thousand and eight hundred feet per minute. Branch runs at six hundred, and again, the, that's been lowered over the. I think it has a lot more to do with people not doing proper duct systems to begin with. So the conclusion here is there's scores of things to worry about when designing and installing a comfort system. Low velocity through a duct airway is not one of them. So that's a pretty straightforward comment right out of Manual D. Now look at that beauty of a system, right? We're going to do a replacement on this. We got to find out. I know what you're thinking. And it wasn't what's the flow, right? And that's, we got to figure out what the flow is through that system. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of creative with this stuff, but I, I got to give credit to my buddy Steve Rogers. Uh, don't get him confused with Captain America. He actually sent me a slide from a, a thing that we both presented at a while back. Well, not a while back, uh, right before the whole Rona thing started down in Florida. And I, I asked him, like, can I have that? And can I use it? And he was like, yeah, sure. Okay, again, I'm, I'm getting used to recording myself on this stuff and I'm learning that I have to 
pause before I start to speak and then pause at the end of the slide because or during the slide transition, some fancy speak for you, because it's cut me off at the end and I'm guessing that's why. So after the next couple of slides, if it seems like I'm just staring into the camera at the end, it's because I'm trying to make it so my final thought ends up getting recorded. All right, so the example that we have right here, and I don't even remember what the last slide is because I'm doing this out of order, but I think it was the one where it's a picture and it was my attic if I didn't say it. But just using it as an example. So will our duct support our volume? And we can use math to do this, right? That CFM is equal to area times velocity. If we flip it around and want to solve for velocity, it's CFM divided by area. So if we know what our target airflow is and we know what size ductwork it is, we can determine what our velocity is going to be. And this is straight math. Uh, it's not taking in anything to consideration with friction loss that's going to take place inside the ductwork. So I have a solution for that. I'm going to show you in a little bit. But if you want to get close with it, this is a pretty good way to get close with it. Dramatic pause for slide change. And the auxiliary calculator on the back of the aqueduct slide gives us some guidance with regards to this. So my example here is 20 by 8 ductwork at 1,000 CFM. And when we see 20 by 8, right, that's our duct size. Then that's volume and velocity is this window and below the window. It shows us that 20 by 8 ductwork is going to have uh, 1,000 CFM uh, flowing through it. Then the velocity is going to be 900 feet per minute. In this example, we have 20 by 8 ductwork trying to support 1,200 CFM. And in the example that we did with our equipment selection, 1,000 or 1,200 CFM would be our target. And here we go. We got uh, 20 by 8 ductwork again. And if we're trying to move 1,200 CFM through it, there's 1,000, 11, 1,200. We're going to be at 1,100 feet per minute. So 20. Uh, four by eight would probably be more applicable for a 1200 CFM system. And if we go through it, we end up seeing 900 feet per minute. And this is sort of true. I'm going to say it's not 100% true because we're not taking the friction of the duct into consideration. If all you got is one of these guys, it doesn't have that auxiliary calculator on the back. And don't just do what it says there in the middle where it says recommended residential setting. That's There's no such thing. And I'm quite proud a couple of years ago, we were finally able to get rid of those. Uh, or those ductulators, we gave them all out. Now uh, our ductulators don't have that that phrase or that recommended thing on there because it's, it's no good. Pause for slide change. Come on, change. All right, so you want to be able to do this and you don't have, uh, or you, you want a better way. Well, here's a better way. Is it my phone? Just look real close. There's me and my kid on the uh in the haunted mansion we're 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 a disney family so i i, I found this by doing a, a google there's a bunch of good stuff on here too if you uh, take a close look if you're not using the, the this uh psycho app's pretty good right here measure quick man that's the that's the deal um get you get you some of them blue vax and all it just good stuff so i i click on this one i have uh no idea who these people are, but they have this really cool app, and free is for me. You can pick your, uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? You can pick your roughness. And in this example right here, we used English rectangular, uh, even dimensions at 75 degrees at sea level. And that's pretty much, I'm 128 if you want to be uh, precise about it where I live. So what we have over here is our 1200 CFM, our 20 by 8 ductwork, and it's coming up with a, a velocity that's uh, about 100 feet per minute more because it is taking some friction of the duct uh, material into account. And at first I have smooth and it says in the description in the app, it's like soft drawn metal or something. I don't know what that is. So let's... Uh, jump into these and when I select roughness I used average because in the drop down menu that appears under select roughness it's galvy metal and most of the ductwork that I deal with is galvy metal flex yes 
a little bit of ductwork and some liner stuff, but 75, 80% of all the ductwork I, I deal with is galvanized sheet metal. So the same settings, same settings. And over here, you can see where our the velocity is uh, up over a thousand. Again, and this is perfect, right? If, if you're used to using a, a ductulator like one of these things, and you take this ductulator, I got ADD, my phone's blinking and I can't, it's just, it's infuriating. But uh, nothing I can do about it except for press on forward. These guys, setting it at that uh, magic 0.1 friction rate, or people will say design static, and I want to punch them in the throat when they say that. But if you take this and set it at a 0.1 friction, it'll give you a 1,000 CFM lines up with a piece of 20 by 8 ductwork. It also ends up with a velocity of 950, 975, and it's kind of, you can't see 975 on here, so I'm getting a little carried away. But it just goes to show if our max velocity is 900, recommended is more around 700, that 20 by 8 ductwork for 1,000 CFM is no bueno. And somebody who's used to using rules of thumb will tell you 20 by 8 ductwork, Galvi Metal, 1,000 CFM, all line up. There's the math right in front of you. It does not. And again, I'm just learning how to do some of this stuff with the GIFs in there. And that's a whole controversy. It's GIF, not GIF, even though my daughter tells me different. But oh, and I, I'm, well, no, I'm going to move it because I'm blocking you right now. But it says, oh, Ed, why do you torture us with this minutia? Uh, and I do because you know what I'm sick of? I'm sick of measuring stuff in houses and the numbers don't line up to what I'm calculating. But the more I do, the more I find out that you can find these little individual things that start to make your numbers more accurate. So the straight CFM is equal to area times velocity. It starts to put us in the right direction, but when you start to put in the friction loss of the ductwork, stuff starts to make sense. Um, I like doing the measuring performance stuff and, and the, using a psychrometric chart, but when you start to get into coil bypass and uh, density correction factors and all that, um, I don't do it. I don't have to, to measure quick stuff. You put the probes in, it's doing all that for you. So uh, there's some, some really cool stuff where you use a true flow. Again, it's, um, you, you can easily uh, correct for density with all those products also. So it's, it's good stuff and I, I want it to be accurate. And with that, uh, I don't have a, a closing screen. I already went longer on this one than I wanted to. Again, uh, more content, uh, more encouragement. So uh, I, Got to go take a shower because I had to cut the grass and then came down here and in the basement to cool off. And uh, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but I got to take a shower. I stink. So with that, I bid you a, a fond farewell and I'll see you on the Internet. Stop button.